I'm excited. I'm excited because I mean literally I almost have chills running down my back because the pond we're building is taking me back to when I first started with Aquascape. We built 11 by 16 foot ponds five days a week. Greg had developed a system of building a pond in 20 products and 20 steps and that's exactly what we're going to do today and we're going to bring it back to basics today. Still build a one of a kind custom creation and we're just going to kill it. It's going to be so much fun and we're going to take you through the 20 steps 20 products and show you how to build a pond step by step by step Good morning everybody, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. We are building a pond that I sold probably five, six months ago, and it's gonna be awesome. When I first started with Aquascape, every pond was about this size. This is a pond I literally built 500 times in my life, and we haven't done this in what it feels like over two years. Everything we've been building lately is large and unique and different, and we're gonna bring it back to basics today. I've got myself and four other guys, and we're gonna take you through the 20 steps 20 products and show you how to build a pond, hopefully inspiring you guys to do the same in your backyard. You guys ready? I am. I would say this, and this isn't even one part of the steps, but if you're gonna build a pond in one day, the most important thing is to have all of your product on site when you're ready to do it. If this rock were to show up at noon, our one day pond now turns into a two day pond. So we've got our cobbles, we got moose, our Illinois brick driver dumping the cobbles. The reason I love using them is they put them in these great um, roll off things, keeping all of our rock nice and clean. So it makes it super easy for us just to kind of move that rock right to the backyard. The rest of the crew is showing up here pretty soon. We're gonna put down a plywood path, get to the backyard over here, and then step one is... All right guys, step one, mark out the pond. Now this is so important. I wanna mark out this pond right away because as the guys start bringing back all the materials, our biofalls, our skimmer, our liner, our pumps, the wheelbarrows, the shovels and everything, as soon as they get back here, they're gonna be excited to start digging. So I need to get this pond marked out right away. So we're building roughly a 10 by 15 foot pond. I would definitely wanna bring it right up into this little cove of the patio. It's gonna look incredible as they're sitting here or sitting over here. So I wanna bring that right up close into the patio here and mark this out. So what I'm gonna do, I put a dot right here. I said I wanted to do a 10 by 15 foot pond. I'm gonna walk off 15 feet this way, put another dot over here. I know I want the pond to come about to here. On this side, I'm gonna walk off 10 feet this way. This forms this imaginary rectangle. Now as long as I keep my lines inside that imaginary rectangle, I know I'll have enough liner to build this 10 by 15 foot pond. So let's mark this thing out. Yes. Love it. So that's step one, mark out the pond. Next thing I wanna do is place my filters. So I want that skimmer box to kind of sit back behind this arborvitae. If I can bring that skimmer box back behind this arborvitae, it's not such a focal point from inside the house. The next thing I wanna do is set my biofalls. Now that one's really important. So I set my biofalls, and like every pond we do, the biofalls is gonna be positioned in an area where I can see it from inside the house. And if you look that way, there's the kitchen table area by the sliding glass door and then a kitchen window over there. So I want to face it that way. So I'm going to drop this in. Now this is why it's so important. Set this thing right away so all the soil you generate from the pond can be used to bury this thing and bury the plumbing. So hold on and I'll show you how to do that. I was second guessing myself. Oh my god. Oh, you can't really see that. But, but it is cold. In fact, it's 25 degrees outside right now. Right now we've got Corey over here getting the biofall set. You can see how that's been excavated out. Step three, do the plumbing. He's gonna get that MPT. That's the male pipe adapter on there. Put a little silicone on the threads. You got Matt stretching out the pipe. We wanna set that thing right away, hook the pipe up to it, and then everything inside this blue painted area here gets put over the top of all that. So super important that we get that all set up. They'll get that set and leveled. Step 5, 
excavating the pod. You can see we're moving along. We've got our pond almost completely excavated. You got Jack and Matt over there just kind of doing the finishing touches on the skimmer. Things are going a little bit behind schedule, so we brought in some reinforcements. Holly over here <laughs> is gonna actually help us with the excavator. So Holly, why don't you jump up in that excavator and we'll show these guys how to dig, huh? So Holly, what I usually do is just push this button. Wait, no, don't push it yet, okay? When you want them to dig faster, you push the button, okay? Ready, go. Yep, push it down. Yeah, there you go, one more time. Go ahead. One more time, Holly. There you go. <laughs> oh. Well, with the help with the homeowner and her daughter, we were able to finish excavating the pond. So awesome to get them involved. You can see we've got everything done. Step six is place the liner and underlayment. Here comes our liner. And now we just start unfolding everything. You know what though? If we twist it, we should be able to get it, right? So what we're talking about is you've got a corner here and a corner there We've definitely got enough up towards the patio So if we twist this liner and get this corner up to there, it gets us a little longer So if we twist it we can get one piece of liner to go all the way to the biofalls and then all the way I think you twisted a little too far, but let's see you got plenty over there still Pull that fold out, please now I've made it all the way to here and all the way back to there. Now this will be super close. I still don't know if we'll get it all the way because as we backfill in here, that corner is gonna come down, but I still like it better. So we'll give it a shot. Install the fabric and underlayment. Right after that, one guy pulled off and went over to hook up the skimmer. So he actually sealed up the whole skimmer. There's actually a whole YouTube video on how to do that if you ever wanna check the links down below. All of our rock was delivered. This is where we talked earlier about how important it is to have that rock here at the right time if that rock wasn't here we would literally have nothing to do right now so here's our rock pile our rocks are always delivered out here on the street so we have about six tons of boulders here a mixture of 12 to 18s 18 to 24s so step number nine is to rock in the pond we've got most of the pond rocked in we saw we start rocking in the pond from the bottom then up to the top getting most of it rocked in then before we put the rest of the gravel down we started installing the underwater lights we want to put those in before we get all the gravel in the pond the main reason we want to do that is we want to use the gravel our pond mix to actually hide the cord from the light so we got jack and corey down here kind of positioned in the lights one of the key things when the placement of the lights obviously i want all the lights pointing away from the viewing area i don't ever want to be sitting on the patio or up here in the kitchen area and lights shining back at us they can be quite blinding a couple more rocks coming back just to kind of tweak some things and then we'll get going here. so let's get those lights in and then we'll start rinsing this baby down I believe rinsing it down is step 10 ish <laughs> All right, so we're just rinsing this down, doing some final touches on the sides. We'll get this thing rinsed down and it's lunchtime. So we just basically come in and we pump this out till it pumps out relatively clear. But we're right there. This is such a crucial point at the project because during lunchtime, we actually want to be achieving something. And what we're achieving is the pond filling up with water. If we can have this thing filled shortly after lunchtime, then we can properly do all of our edges, which makes it so much easier. Step 12 is build the waterfall, so I'm gonna start working on that. Corey's on step 13. We had about five yards of topsoil brought in. Main reason we did that is because look at how low the topsoil is that we generated from our hole to cover the biofalls. We also got a lot to come in back here. The other reason we bring it in is because usually we dig down through about six, eight inches into the ground and then we hit clay. And so this topsoil will give us, not us, but the customers an opportunity to actually plant this in some decent soil. 
right guys, it is after lunch. I'm gonna turn this around and show you how high our water level is. It's almost to the top. After lunch is where everything starts coming together. At this point, it's kind of looked like a bomb had gone off in the backyard. But as the pond starts filling up with water, as we start tweaking our edges, things start looking really good. This is also where we break up into different groups. There's no way all five of us can work on the waterfall at the same time. There's no way all five of us can work on doing the pumps. There's no way all five of us can work on doing the topsoil. So we all break up into different areas. I'll probably move over into the waterfall section over in here, start kind of positioning that. Step 14, build necessary retaining walls. You can actually see Matt over here bringing in some boulders. Those rocks need to go on the backside right in here. You can see how much higher our skimmer box is than this area here. So we need to get a couple boulders in here just to retain some soil in through here. That's also gonna happen on sides over in this area. So once I start getting my waterfall done, then we'll know where the necessary retaining walls have to happen over on different sides. After all those retaining walls are done, I should be done with my waterfall. We'll get that up and running. Then we'll come over and start tweaking it. After that's done, then we can start trimming the liner and finishing off the edges on the stream. Now this is important. You know, it's so important, I think we'll actually stop talking about it now and wait until we get to it. Because step 16 is really, really important. For all you beginners out there, the number one thing you want to do with a pond is never cut your liner around the perimeter until the pond is up to its fullest level. The biggest mistake you can make is cut that liner too short because the liner stretcher just doesn't exist. So we want to make sure we wait till the pond's filled up all the way to the level it's going to be at. The other place I don't want to cut any liner is definitely around my waterfalls. I've got a kind of a two drop waterfall. This one doesn't really count as a drop because water's above that. But I'm going to get water to come over that rock right there and then come in between these two through what we call like a V waterfall. So we're going to take that big 5PL pump, funnel it through these two big rocks, get really thick, deep, babbly brook sound here. And then up above, we'll get more of a sheet style fall coming off the face of that rock. We got a couple more boulders we have to put in here. I'm going to turn this on when I'm all done before I fine tune all this liner around the edges. Again, the reason I want to do that, I don't want to trim that liner too short, especially where there's moving water, because to try to fix that means all of these rocks would have to shift inwards in order for me to get more liner or try to seam on folded liner, which just sucks. Pretty soon we'll get that done. Um, we'll fire that up, just make sure the edges are high. Then we can start mulching this berm and then we'll get that street cleaned up. All right, moving right along. That looks like mulch. That means we are at step 17. Jack is now finishing trimming the liner. Corey's mulching the berm. Then we start cleaning up. Then we add some bacteria to the pond. And then most important, we get the customer's response. We are so close to being done. We are at step 18 cleanup. You got Jack out here just getting the street cleaned up, getting all of our spoils. We got to get up this plywood. That's got to come. This machine's got to get out of here. But the street's looking pretty good. Get all of our scraps and liner out of here. We are so close. Oh, we got the garbage man. <laughs> focus, focus, focus. Ah, oh, there you are. Let's do this. That help. Whoa. All right. <laughs> All right, we are so close to being finished. Just kind of touching things up. We've got our retaining walls done. I know the street has been cleaned up. We've got Jack just kind of finishing up hiding the biofalls up there. In fact, let me turn you up there and show you what he's doing. Corey and Ryan built this retaining wall over in here. Obviously, we need some of these bigger boulders in here to hold the grade of the soil that's up in here. What we don't want to do is create this big giant ant hill type look. And then we got Jack up in here kind of doing some of the final touches up on the biofalls tray. So they give you this tray and the one thing that drives me nuts is they put this sticker right in the most visible area. <laughs> We've got this biofalls tray up here. It's meant to put rocks in there just to kind of make it tie in with everything else. I really like using the 6,000 biofalls because it gives it more of an upper pool look. And then notice how Jack is taking the rock and bringing it out well past the tray. What I don't want is this necklace look all the way around the perimeter. So a combination of some boulders, some gravel. So we're getting all that done. Thing to really do on this job site is to kind of grade everything out, get the mulch in here. We'll finish cleaning everything up. We'll plug this baby in, make sure Sure this liner edge is nice and high. I didn't want to cut any of that yet or trim it too far back until I see what the water is going to do up in here. So I think we're just about there and we'll see what happens. Pump is on. You can actually see some of that debris getting pulled into the basket. I'm guessing 
Yep, there goes the first leaf in there. Let's go check our edges, make sure things are going where they're supposed to be going. Getting really close right in here. So even though it's okay, I still want to double check it. What I don't want to do is come back a year from now and then this is too low. So we'll get this built up a little bit more and we should be all right. But everything up in here looks really good. It's got a really nice flow. Woo! Got a little cloudy. <laughs> I'm back out here. <laughs> Do you hear the wind? Oh my gosh. So I'm back out here at our 20 step project on how to build a pond. And I just kind of did my final walkthrough with the customers. There's a tornado about to come out here. Um, it's super, super windy. So hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm back out here. The pond is crystal clear. It looks amazing. My hair is doing its thing. Woo! Customers absolutely love it. Had a lot of the common questions, which are like, where should my water level be at? How do I know if I have a leak? How do we control those lights? So on and so on. And that's super common. We actually tell the customers, don't worry about anything for the first two weeks. Live with it, just enjoy it as you're enjoying it. Think of those questions and we'll address them when we come back out. I'm gonna turn this around though and show you what our final creation looks like. I think it's a much better day. There's a little cloud so I can give you guys kind of an idea of what we built in the single day. Here you go. enjoyed the whole process hopefully more importantly you guys learned something and how quick and easy a pod can be done when you have a process